Hey everyone, Sam Mackay here from Enterprise DNA. I just want to highlight a really effective technique that I uh, discovered uh, through the Enterprise DNA forum. There was a, a question asked and a really great solution that I, I definitely feel um, deserves highlighting. Uh, and so this this is this was uh, covering a stock report. And so um, if I, I'll just navigate, I'll just quickly navigate to the actual forum post itself, so you can actually have a look. So. I'll make sure that the link is provided, but what uh, essentially was being asked was, so you select you select up to a certain date and you want to see everything um, prior to that date. But what if you want to uh, also compare compare the results to the current date to a pro to to a different time frame, but then see an extended period for that different time frame. Now, the issue is with the natural context which occurs within your report page, it's very difficult to do that. And so a solution was required um, that was better than using the um, the filtering area within within the Power BI port, pa the um, page level filters, right, within your Power BI report. So essentially what the solution was, and um, I'll just, actually, I'll just quickly dive back in here. So it it's went around a little bit. So. You see here that this was uh, the original, um, right? But what the um, what the member wanted was to only show up to a certain point, not to show every single data point um, through time. You want to sort of run a comparison that looks more like this, right? Um, so you see how we've got the the previous year is showing everything, but we want the current year. Um, to only be up to a certain point so you can sort of see the difference, right? And so maybe this is like a forecast, right? You, you want to see, okay, well, this is what happened last year. So I kind of want to kind of want to forecast like what, out to the future what was happening last year. Um, but then I only want to see up to this date of my current of my current portfolio. Okay, so that was the challenge. Now, when you normally filter by say a date, you would only get this, you would only get up to a certain date, like for both, right? So like if you were comparing one year versus the last year, if you say selected your date here, then you'd only get up to a certain point in time. But what's been done here is a little bit of a trick so that you can see that forecast of your last year results, but only go up to a certain date for only one part or only up for the one um, line here or one selection, right? Now, what the eventual, uh, there's a couple of things to it, right? what the eventual strategy was which is which is um the key here is and i'll just actually clean this up a little bit um was to create another date table so that one date table determined what the results were in one of the lines and the other date table determined what was the result in the in the in the um in the other line right uh and so uh in terms of the formula techniques, not too hard in terms of time intelligence, etc. But I'm just I'm just changing this around just because I think this showcases it a little bit better. But you see, we've got date one here, and we've got date two, and so date one is going to um, determine what we show here, and date two is going to determine what we show here. Now the trick, the natural context is going to come from, say, um, here. Natural context is going to come from from both because they're both active relationships. But the date here is uh, what we use. So you got to. It's, it's it's a little bit tricky, right? The the date is what is in the slicer, right? So the slicer is going to determine one of the lines. So you see here that and that that line, if we go down and select this visualization, is being determined by this measure, which is just a simple sum, right, of the data. Then this other line here we're using a time intelligence function. So if we have a look at this, you'll see um, this is a pretty standard time intelligence function. Calculate the, the stock history units, which is the one I just looked at, same period last year. But look at what's in the same period last year. It's the date number two, right? So we're not using the initial dates column. We're using the dates column from the second date table. But the two dates, because this they still it still works in one visualization because you've got to remember that the two dates both have active relationships here down to the uh, fact table and so once one is filtered here it's still going to filter this other one for that last year result but what we can do now is we can put them in the same visualization and dynamically see okay well here's a bit of a forecast out to for, from what happened last year and this is what we are currently seeing up to this point so I thought that was a really cool solution to something that um, 
a, a lot of us might you know it's, it's a different sort of insight that you might be able to show especially you know around budgeting or your future insights or maybe maybe even scenario analysis just think of it like that maybe maybe if you want to um, run some sort of scenarios and you want to see them over some sort of time frame and then you want to be able to dynamically switch between a date and try and see okay well this was the expected return what actually happened you know that's how you can um, showcase something like that and this is this is how you just by using your imagination you can really take your your power bi insights to another level so hopefully you enjoyed that one nothing nothing too difficult there right it's just about understanding context really well and just being creative around um you know uh, how you want to showcase something and then how do you actually make it happen within the model and in this case it was just sort of adding a, an additional date table i mean you could really simplify things here a little bit more by i mean do you really need everything else in this date table you could have just taken the date column that would have been fine because remember you're only using that inside of the formula right um, but it actually it looks like this here uh, let's have a look no this was from the standard date table so look there's some some ways you can optimize this a little bit more but but definitely this was worth a shout out in terms of in terms of, of our solution so well done to um, Rajesh from uh, one of our one of our enterprise DNA members who who came, came up with this um, really good work uh, and um, really good solution okay that's all I wanted to um, highlight there just a quick and easy technique for you to use um, if you liked it Definitely, um, definitely um, like the video, appreciate it as always, and uh, don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV. Um, you know, lots of lots of good ideas here, lots of good ideas coming out um, within within the, the the channel, but also through all of our web properties, in, including the forum. So so definitely check that out if you want to learn more about some um, you know high quality uh, Power BI development. Okay, all the best.